It's barely 9 a.m. on a Tuesday. With caffeine in one hand and a pep in her step, Anderson Clayton's already hard to keep up with. Okay, so we're headed to the Courier Times. We're 30 miles north of Durham in the heart of rural Roxboro. This is where, like, I used to write for the this paper when I was in high school here as a little journalism student. And really? Yes, I did. Rocking a Roxboro t-shirt and a southern drawl, the 25-year-old's introducing us to some of her early influences. Hey, Good to meet you, Tim Boyum. That includes hey, Kelly Snow, publisher and editor of the Courier Times in Roxboro. Even as a high school junior, he trusted her to write stories. And we get there and he like locks his car and he looks at me and he goes, okay, you're the reporter for the day. I'm going to follow you around and like you're going to do this. And I said, what? That article would later win an award. Kelly's not surprised Clayton beat the odds winning the state Democratic Party chair race earlier this year. She's a champ. She's a champ. And I have called you that for how many years now? <laughs> quite a lot. Quite a lot. <laughs> Kelly. So. I spent a lot of time down here over the years, and it is great to, to be back. In Nearly Carolina. three hours west, GOP Chairman Michael yeah, Watley shares Anderson Clayton's energy, but leads with experience. I volunteered on uh, Reagan, 84, uh, when I was a sophomore up at Watauga High School in Boone, and uh, then, you know, did a, did a stint in uh, the congressional side, so up in Washington uh, for a while. I, I served in the Bush administration, was Elizabeth Dole's chief of staff. And uh, then, you know, uh, got rolled into to being with the Trump campaign and then uh, the party chair here. He says that last part was at the request of the Trump campaign in 2019. And so I got a call from the campaign and they said, hey, we need you to run for chair. I said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not that guy, right? I'll, I'll run the search committee. And they said, no, 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 no. Boss man wants you. We need you to step up and, and be the chair of North Carolina. Despite his reluctance. I'm Michael Wadley, and I'm running to be the chairman of the North Carolina Republican Party because we need a reset in Raleigh. You guessed it. He ran and won. It was not something I had, I had planned on doing, but uh, it's been a labor of love. I mean, I really do enjoy it. I enjoy getting out and, and talking to everybody. And, you know, North Carolina is so important. So it's, it's one where we've got to win. Back in Roxboro, we stop at the house where Anderson Clayton grew up. Well, more of a road where she grew up. And then beside Carter is my uncle, um, and then my other aunt, and then my other uncle, and my other cousin. So you just kind of keep going down the road, and it just it gets more and more of us. <laughs> After college, Clayton worked on presidential campaigns for Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris. It was in Iowa she realized it was time to head home. And we went out and we just found Democrats in all parts of Benton County, people that had felt really left behind. And I was like, dang, if people feel this way in rural Iowa and there's 30 of them that'll come out to a party meeting, I can't imagine what's in Person County that I have not figured out or discovered yet. And Iowa was the first place that I was like, I need to go home. So she did. She got active quick. 2021, she raised her hand to lead the Person County Democrats. <laughs> Shana Outlaw was active in the social justice scene, but she wasn't politically active until Anderson Clayton showed up one day. Just been telling me what I could do, how great I could be, what the community needed, how she saw that in me, and how she was gonna have my back. The McDonald's manager agreed to run, but she never planned on winning in a town then run by Republicans. You know what, honestly, I, I wasn't looking to win. I wasn't, I just, I wanted them to know that we were here, we were interested, and, and you're not, they're not alone, you know. There's people who look like me who want better in our community. So I didn't anticipate winning, but I did. Then so we went down the road screaming. <laughs> like, yeah, we did it. They went down the road, flipping the Roxborough Council from red to blue. It inspired her to run for state chair, another race she did not expect to win. You're from Person County? Mm -hmm. This was a Rowan County Democratic Party event where she was clearly a new name. A lot of times I think that people said, you know, Anderson, you've got too big of ideas. What are you doing here? You know, why would you ever want to stay in Person County? And I hate to think that any young person growing up in a rural county right now has that, that being forced down their throats, honestly, that they have to leave their hometowns in order to, to be successful. She was finding the status quo, a sitting chair endorsed by the governor and attorney general. But she won, focusing on grassroots and winning an area Democrats struggled to win, rural North Carolina. She's the youngest chair in state history and the youngest in the country. Everybody always asked me, they said, Anderson, and on the campaign trail I got all the time, where do you see the party going, left or right? Which, which direction you want to pull it in? I said, forward. I want it to go forward. She said out loud what others said behind closed doors. 
She believes Democrats left rural North Carolina behind. And I was like, I want to change the Democratic brand. I want to make it so that like we're showing up in rural areas again, that we're rebuilding like the trust that we have lost in communities that look just like this one. What is the situation, do you think, about how important the urban vote is for Republicans in the future? Well, I think it's critical. I mean, you, you look at the growth of North Carolina between 2010 and 2020 censuses, 71% of it came in the Charlotte area and the Raleigh area, you know? And so uh, we're actually seeing population declines in the rural areas. You know, if, if this turns out to be Republicans are rural, Democrats are urban, we're gonna get killed. Despite their extreme political disagreements, this is where Michael Watley and Anderson Clayton actually share a lot in common. Remember that chart I showed you where Republican urban votes dropped? Flip it and you'll see a steep decline for Democrats in rural areas, areas where Anderson Clayton calls home, areas she and others believe have been ignored by Democrats. Rural to me, like when I, and, and I'm looking at rural person County, like 51% of my city is black, which means that like we should be engaging them. That when we like leave people behind, we've left black and brown voters like our own people behind. And it's not just them too, like it's, it's working class voters in general that we just have stopped talking to. She knows it's vital. In the past decade, Republicans have gained super majorities in the legislature, full partisan control in the state Supreme Court, and redistricting this year could shift the congressional balance of power from seven to seven to 11 to three for Republicans. In close races, every vote counts, and she's counting on a return to rural North Carolina. The challenges these party chairs face have played out very publicly in the past several weeks. They picked the wrong chick for that. Starting with Mecklenburg County Representative Trisha Cotham leaving the Democratic Party. I have decided to change my party affiliation, joining the Republican Party. Wally believes it proves Republicans can appeal to urban voters. The Democratic Party really truly has moved so far to the left that they are driving ladies like her away from the party. The day Cotham switched, Clayton had her first big moment in the spotlight as chair. She was blunt in a response to Cotham's accusations. And everything that she said about what my party has done internally is off base, because I do believe that we are a party that represents and allows everyone's voices to be heard in them. And on the same day we met with Anderson Clayton, the legislature voted to override Governor Cooper and restrict abortion further. The actions of this body speak louder than any carefully crafted bill. Just hours after her interview, she sat in the gallery of the North Carolina legislature protesting the vote. Earlier in the day, it was clear where her views on the issue were shaped. So women's rights, women's studies, women's bodies have always been important to her as they have to me, my sister, and my mother. That was something that we drilled in them. You are in control. This is your temple. Her grandma was a huge influence. She lived next door and passed away four years ago. Sorry, I really will. I'll get so much about it, Tim, but I'm just like, it's, it is. Like, I know she's so happy to see it. So. They're going to use this as a wedge issue. Guess what? They've always used it as a wedge issue. Back in Charlotte, abortion was a hot topic of conversation at the women's GOP event as well. I think we need to say, oh my God, this is great. Roe v. Wade was overturned. What a great opportunity for America. What a great opportunity for us on messaging to talk about pro-life issues. Later asked Wally how that might land with urban voters where abortion is supported at a much higher rate. Now we got to be smart in how we engage on the issue. We got to be smart on how we message uh, with that issue. But I think if you if you're willing to sit down and have those conversations, uh, this does not necessarily have to be a fatal issue for any Republican. And joining us now, the newly elected chair of North Carolina's Democratic Party, Anderson Clayton. In recent weeks, Anderson Clayton's surprise win in youth has earned the national spotlight. To me, everybody's worth talking to, and we've mm -hmm. got to make sure that's the message this year. From national TV to backstage moments meeting the president of the United States. He walked up to me and he goes, Madam Chair, hardest job, most thankless job in the world. And I said, I thought that was your job. Madam Chair, it is my honor and great pleasure to nominate Donald J. Trump for the office of President of the United States of America. Michael Watley's had his own time in the spotlight with President Trump. Michael, thank you very much, and congratulations on your re-election today as chairman of the North Carolina Republican Party. But Watley and Clayton both know presidential moments won't lead to votes. Time will tell whether rural Anderson Clayton or suburban Michael Watley can lead the parties past the urban-rural divide.